Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, this is Pino Trogo from the School of Design at San Francisco State University. And this is the introduction to drawing for designers class. Uh, today is Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. And today we're going to draw two cubic modules, your, your cube, um, in two point perspective with a high horizon line. So I'm just gonna go through the various options. Um, uh, there'll be again option A, which is the way the assignment was drafted before, and it's still a possibility if you can do it. Um, and the final drawing will look like this, which will have your two cubes in the same positions as the um, positions that we used for your um, cube isometric, if you recall. Uh, where one view is symmetrical, the other view is asymmetrical. I'm going to be using the same cube so that um, uh, it's consistent, but you need to do your cube. Okay, so I don't, I think even if you don't have your model, uh, we can do it because of um, some of the, uh, some of the aids that we can set up. Okay, so again, the the left cube will be the symmetrical view. The right cube will be the asymmetrical view. Like that. Um, and, and this will be a trace because you have tracing paper, you don't have vellum. If you had nice vellum paper, you could put on vellum, but tracing is fine. On top of the construction, which is gonna look rather elaborate, and it's going to look something like this. And I'll go through all these steps again. Um, so again, in this, what we're calling option A, uh, which would be if you had this uh, printout to work from, which would have looked like this, you could have directly drawn on this to do your drawing. Since you don't have it, um, one way to do it is to um, make a larger sheet because this is actually 11 by 17 or 12 by 18 if you use the uh, nine by 12 paper, just tape it together to create a larger sheet and then use the specifications. Uh, this is all in iLearn. So this is in iLearn and it shows given that size of paper 11 by 17, if it's 12 by 18, you know, just adjust it a little bit. But the main thing is that some of the relationships stayed the same, okay? So I'm not gonna completely redraw it now for the demo, but you would um, if you had no printer. Now, if you had a printer, you could try to print, you could try to, actually, no, you can't, because I haven't uploaded this one. I'm, I'm going to upload this tonight, and you could try to print this in two halves if you had a printer. Um, also, if you had a printer, you could print, uh, I've made, I've split that drawing into two parts. And now I just have to find them. So then, yeah. And the only thing is that because it was late <laughs> and I was working from an older version, um, I ended up redrawing this drawing for the double print, but putting the, um, the station point aligned with the right cube. And if you do that, which is okay, the left cube is going to be a little more deformed, a little bit disproportionate, but it's still okay. Um, I just didn't realize I was working from an older, an older drawing because in this one, the station point is actually slightly off to the middle so that we get a more balanced view of the two cubes. Whereas in the one I just showed, it's right here, aligned with this element. So different ways to print, if you can print. If you cannot print, uh, disregard this file. And also just since we're on the iLearn subject, um, 
This is, an also, this is also in iLearn, but it's simply, again, an example. And in fact, even in this example, um, I realize it's the one that, again, shows the station point being aligned with the right cube, with the edge of the right cube, as opposed to being a little bit further. So um, just, just look at it as an example, but don't, you know, don't copy this or don't try to do this one. If you cannot print, then, um, then you ought to, um, again, if you're, if you're going to do option A, I'm gonna show you option B in a second, which is completely different. But uh, if, you're, if you're doing option A, then just simply attach two pieces of paper with scotch tape, make it large, and then uh, use these dimensions to set up your drawing, okay? Uh, meaning you have to set up your plan view using these angles which are given by your, um, your 30, 60 triangle. Okay. And, um, and then just, just use all the, other, all the other pieces of information to set up the drawing. This is the part that we want to draw, right? This is what we want to build up because then inside that we're gonna do the actual uh, cube design, okay? But once you do this, it's actually, it's just a matter of doing the work. It's not that complicated. Um, so I'm going to basically pretend that I'm starting from a blank sheet. Um, however, in the interest of time, I'll use uh, this pre-printed one, okay? So I'll, I'll work on top of this. Um, and I'll, I'll go through the steps. The option B, is a little bit different in that it's sort of like, I guess I could call it the desert island <laughs> uh, version in which there's very, very little materials. However, I'm able to get to you quite a bit of information. I'll just have to find that again. And it's this one. So what I did, by the way, in this version, the cube is three inches. Um, in this version, again, which I'm calling option B, all you need is, well, not all, but you need your ruler, which has millimeters and, and inches. Um, and you need a sheet that is um, nine by 12, which should be in your pad, right? So what I did using a, an overlay, I actually rebuilt that same perspective. Um, and then I actually enlarged it on the computer. So let me just show you so you can understand. So what I did, I put an overlay over my construction and I determined, I determined where these cubes would be, would be. Then what I did, I extended the line to this border and it's almost like a zooming in and I came up with this, basically it's almost like a drawing by numbers or connected dots kind of thing. So essentially all my vanishing lines that would go to the vanishing points, which would be outside this drawing. I just marked all the intersections with the left edge, the right edge, the top edge, and the bottom edge of the uh, window that you get if you put a, uh, a border around your drawing, half inch all around, and then your, your title block here, three quarters of an inch. So what you would need is to mark following the instructions in the PDF on, um, on iLearn, and you would literally make your drawing, make your border, and now if this thing focuses, it's funny how sometimes it does focus, sometimes it doesn't. There we go. No. <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, you would start basically from the top and say, okay, I need to come down 24 and a half. I know half a millimeter sounds small, but actually you can eyeball it. So remember the numbers on the ruler are centimeters and there's 10 millimeters every 
um, every centimeters, centimeter, okay? So that would be 24, 26, 29, and so forth. And so you would essentially plot all these um, markings, and then you see how I number them? That's because I want to connect those same numbers to the other side, okay? So that they match um, in such a way that literally, like I said, it's a little bit like drawing by numbers. So by matching the numbers for the lines at those given di distances with the millimeters, you will be able to recreate exactly the same uh, perspective. Once you have this box, um, I can show you how you get the divisions. Okay, so that's option B. If for whatever reason, you cannot do it this way. Okay, and most likely, again, this will be for people who can't join the meeting now um, and might want to do it that way. So I'll leave that out for a moment. And also leave this here. Now, what I'll do is I'll recreate my little map that was basically my cube, right? And we're going to position again by half a turn relative to each other, okay? So the one on the left is going to be my symmetrical view this one. The one on the right, it's going to be turned, uh, let's see, 90 degrees this way. And that will be my asymmetrical view. And if you have this drawing lying around of your cube, this will be helpful because essentially we are redrawing these things, not as from above, not as much from above, a little less, and also in perspective. Um, and especially if you don't have the cube, this is what you want in order to follow the design around the faces. Um, so I'll, I'll use this as my, again, my, my master. And I'll keep it here handy. Okay. And I'm going to tape my drawing because, um, yeah, just it's easier that way. So, like I said, this is now already drawn, but obviously, if you can't print it, you have to start from scratch and draw these parts. Um, from scratch. And again, for that, use, use this, um, this handout, okay, which will tell you where, put th where to put things. Okay, so you would draw, yeah, just follow these dimensions, you know, you would, you would draw the first line, the picture plane, four and a half from the top. If it's 11 by 17, if it's 12 by 18, then it might be slightly different, as long as you don't change the inside relationships, okay? Um, so you draw the picture plane, you position your cubes at this angle. So to repeat, that's the angle you want to draw your cube, right? So this is the horizontal. So that was 30 and this is 60 degrees right here. Okay, um, and that we're putting at three and three quarters from the right side. Then at five from the right side, we're going to put the station point, which is also going to be down six inches from the picture plane. Okay, so five inches from the right and six inches from the picture plane. The horizon line is three quarter inches down from that. This looks more for some reason. No, it's three quarter inches, okay. Um, and then we establish the vanishing, the left and right vanishing points by projecting 
Whatever you do, you can make big markings on your dots and your spots, but don't mess with the actual crossing because then it's going to be harder to find it. Okay. Um, so the way we find the vanishing point is again we use we use that angle, okay, and we. We, we use the same angle from the station point to the picture plane. We find A and B, and then we drop them down until they hit the horizon line to give us the uh, left vanishing point and the right vanishing point. And to go back to a 3D view of what our environment looks like, um, if you were to draw a 3D picture of, of what we're doing, we are here in the station point. Our object is here, right behind the glass. Come on, focus. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Basket camera. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'll zoom out a little bit, so even though it's a little fuzzy. Um, anyway, we draw this line then from the station point until we hit the picture plane, uh, and then we go up from that spot. And when it hits the horizon line, that's our vanishing point. Now, because we're going to flip our picture plane onto the same plane as the ground to get all in one, oops, all in one surface, uh, it looks as if we're actually drawing the line down, right? Because we're going down this way. But we're really going up if we were in real space. Uh, once we find it, then that's where all our lines are going to converge. Okay. I have, um, I pre-drew um, the face of the left cube in perspective, because if you notice, it's not touching the ground. This one is, and it's just the geometry that creates that little distance there, that little space. So this would have been a little bit trickier to draw, although it's possible. However, when we start drawing, we'll start here because since it touches, it's a little bit easier, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing it. Again, assuming that we had established all these other things. Um, besides the plane view, you need to do the side elevation, which is really just your cube. And by the way, this is three inches. Um, so it's a little bit smaller than the real cube. And these are quarter inch divisions. Um, actually, one good idea is to not draw this the way I did, which is kind of a generic view, but to draw it according to your design. So if I look at this from the top, uh, let's see. I'm looking here, number, this is my view number one, and this is my view number two. I, I should put it here, but I don't want to mess up this area. Um, so those would be these two edges. So the first one is this edge, and then the second one is this edge, if I look there, right? So let's look at the first one. Um, what I need to draw is all the lines that I have. Remember, this line is not there because this is the same surface. So in my design here, I need to add lines here and here, that is these lines. So whatever your design has, um, it's gonna have at the most a line every quarter, right? And not more. And then the second one would be this. So my, the same lines I drew here, I need to draw them here. Um, and earlier I tried to figure out a good way to mask the extra lines here that I don't need. And I couldn't really find anything better than this really thick tape, which I'm gonna use again because um, it works. <laughs> I know it's a little thick. Um, so here I need to eliminate this line because again, that's, that's a, it's not a real line, it's, it's a joint, but 
shouldn't have been a joint in that model since I stole the cube from a student. Ah. Bear with me for a moment. And on the other one, we eliminate this line. So whatever, again, your design is, you want to, um, you want to try to have the real, the right view of it. Let me quickly draw um, I have to measure here otherwise I don't know where I am exactly um, I will. these are three inches so one quarter is three qu three quarters of an inch Going through the center, I got all the way to the other side. That up. Uh, and then here's the other way, and because of the geometry, I actually can just do these to get exactly what I need here. I was just pointing there. Um, I didn't need to measure. Okay, so whatever your design is, just replicate it at the top. Um, Okay, what I'm going to do, well, first we have to build the cubes, you know, the total cube, even though later we're just going to draw the bottom, the lower part. Uh, and then for later, we're going to use this as our guide. So right now, what we want to do is, is get to the point where we can um, This is getting a little ahead, but the first thing we want to draw is the actual total cubes, what I call the envelope, the other envelope. Um, and the easiest part to start from is actually this spot, the leading edge of the right, because it's the true dimension. Um, so what I'm going to do um, is simply project the height of this square to the right which will give me the height of that edge. Oops. Okay. Um, again, make sure you're using both tools because otherwise things will be out of whack. So, Ah, it's sticking. I'm going to use a softer pencil, even though I'm not crazy about it because it's a little bit of a mess, but it will be darker so you can, it can be shown better on the screen. Um, so I'm going to use HB, which is quite soft but you should still use just two H, okay? Um, and once we get this 
two cubes built up in terms of their outer edges, then the rest is going to be a lot easier because we don't need to do too much construction um, to get it all done. So now from that spot, we need to go to the left vanishing point and to the right vanishing point, both top and bottom. Um, hopefully your ruler, I think your, your um, metal ruler should be long enough. Um, I, I happen to have a longer triangle here, so I'm just going to use it. So I just go there. And again, I'm going to make my lines pretty dark. Um, the trick here is also make sure you go to the vanishing points and not to A and B, which were used to determine the vanishing points. Uh, sometimes one makes that mistake and then is stuck. And I go to the right vanishing point as well. I keep repeating it, just make it light, okay? I'm doing it dark for the video, but make yours quite light because um, it'd be easier than to overlap the actual, the actual design. Um, okay, so if you remember from the tutorial, the way we now find these two edges, which are gonna be not there, but a little bit in, because right, they're going away, so they're gonna be smaller, um, is that we draw lines from those two spots to the station point right here, okay? Right there. Like that, and like that to here. And when they intersect the picture plane, then I drop down vertical lines. So let's see, right there. What I do is I do a fairly light line and then I darken my intersection there. So I did the same on the right side. Okay, now those two lines I drop down very clear. And that's gonna give me the, um, the sides of my shape of my cube. Um, and now I can darken it a little bit. So it's starting to take shape. So now, because I have those two corners, I can go opposite directions and get the top. And right away, you'll see that this one, because it's on the same line, you know, the two cubes are next to each other like that. Once I find this line for the for the right cube, it's gonna it's gonna continue on to the second. And if I did it right, this and this and this should all be lined up. And of course, I made a big mistake. You guys see the mistake I made? I actually went to the to whatever this is rather than going there to get my markings. So that's wrong. Um, let me uh, raise it. Um, and the way I could tell that was wrong is because, in fact, my my spots here were not aligning. In fact, they were badly misaligned, so it was too small. Okay. So let's erase that. It's nice about pencil, you can erase it. All right, let's try again. So station point, maybe I need to make this even more obvious, <laughs> so I don't make a mistake again. All right. Okay, now I find this two spot. Let me just check for a moment in case somebody has a question. Um, 
Yeah, uh, Justin had a question about paper. You, you don't need to cut in, Justin, but uh, yeah, just you, you need to tape two sheets of smaller paper. Um, you know, just scotch tape. If you don't have scotch tape, um, hmm. you can glue paper with glue <laughs> or glue made from flour. I don't know if you guys have ever made glue made from flour for like paper mache. But anyway, yeah, that's one way to get bigger paper, just attach two sheets. All right, I'll now drop these two spots right here, which I got from connecting the station point to the two edges and where they intersect the picture plane. So now it should be okay. Let's finish this part. So now these in this spot right here, which is which are these two spots, should line up all the way to the vanishing point along the along that left back side of the right cube. Um, and right now it does. That's nice. So now I connect this opposite spot to the left vanishing point. And, uh, oh, you see now as we move forward, there's going to be more and more that's not exactly given, but can be found more easily. So this spot right here, for example, is easily found. From here, I can go back. From here, I can go back to the right, from here to the left. So what, I'm just going to complete every bit that I can where I don't have to... Um, of course, you know, a cube is a simple shape, right? But it's a pretty fascinating shape. And I made another mistake. See, when I get distracted and kind of talking over myself, I went to that spot instead of going there. But I, and I could tell because somehow these two lines were not converging nicely. And I thought that looks funny. So let me fix that. left vanishing point. Okay, that looks better. Um, from this corner right here. Oh, here's a good point. Actually, you don't have this, right? If you draw it from scratch. In other words, this is okay to draw. It's not so hard, but this you wouldn't know unless you really build it up. So step, let's step back for a moment and say that pretend that this doesn't exist. So how would you find it? And the way we find it, now that we have built this one, we know because they're attached that it will be a continuation of this line, right? Of this face. But where it stops, we don't know. But we find it through the same old system. So this very corner here, the leading edge of the left cube, we go to the station point and where it intersects the picture plane, we drop it down vertically. And if we do it right, it should correspond to our already found solution. And it does. Okay, so yeah, just pretend I actually don't have this pre-drawn and that's how I'm finding it. So I found that this is already given. Um, now these two, I project them out. Again, even if they don't exist because I've already just found that. Same here. And again, the edge I find by connecting that to the station point where it intersects, it happens to be already drawn. But again, I have to pretend that it's not already drawn. 
and where it intersects, I bring it down. Um, so that gives me that side. Now, now I can say I have it. Not that I have it, I just finished the top. And I'm gonna finish the bottom. And then the last thing will be the back edges, the back middle edges, which we do know they should correspond to these spots right here, right? One and two, and also one and two here. Um, here it's a little trickier because it's a little squished. Now, there are these two spots, so we can do yet one more construction to find them, so we can double check. Um, you're not seeing the picture, the station point now in the pic in the video, but pretend you are. Pretend it's you see it. I'm going there. That's one for that corner. Well, actually, let's not assume anything. Let's like just zoom out and show that in fact I am going from that very back corner to the station point. And where it intersects, that should give me the uh, vertical for those two back spots. Now, I'm rushing a little bit, so it's possible that it may be a little off. Let's just see. One is there. Wait. Uh, oh, yeah, right. I, I take it back. This is not... This is not the corner of my left cube. This is the midpoint of my left cube. Yeah, that didn't make sense, but this is. So that one, let's just finish that one. And it's pretty good. A little bit off there. Um, yeah, I know the, this side right here corresponds to the middle of that one. So, I should find this spot. So I, I connect that one. And there's various ways I, I can show you how to find it differently, but um, now that I've plotted there, I can bring it here. And it's right there. One way I could have found the middle of the right cube is by doing a diagonal on the floor. Let's try that. If I do a diagonal on the floor, I get a center. And because I can now project this, and this is where it might be a little bit off, ah, it's pretty good. So now, yeah, it's almost right. So that would have given me the same spot. And I actually trust this to be pretty precise, so I might have to adjust a little bit. Um, so that's, now even though I've moved my station point to the middle, so it's more balanced in terms of the way I'm looking at it, rather than being like this, it's more like this. Um, the left cube still looks a little bit too deep. Um, you know, it's just, just the way it is, uh, and you can see, it's still a little more distorted to the to that side, but let's not worry about it. Um, oops, I always keep going to the wrong one. I'm just gonna check something. Um, Yeah, okay, I was trying to find this, the back corner and it's quite a bit off in terms of, let's see, here we go. So basically I'm done with the, um, 
I'm going to show now option B real quick and then we take a, a short break, okay? So it's a little bit hard to see now. There's a lot of lines, but um, That's the construction. Um, so, you can visualize, right? That's one cube, and this is the other one, and they overlap there. Um, okay, in the second part, I'll show how to do the grid inside. But before I do that, uh, and before we take a quick break, let me show you how you would get to that using the so-called option B, which is again a little bit of a painting by numbers kind of exercise, but you know, if there is a an emergency or if you have nothing, no other tools, this might work. Um, So what I'll do now is, again, I will connect uh, numbers on the left side. If my zoom focuses, there we go. See, so they're numbered one, two, three. But first you have to plot them. First you have to measure from the top going down 24 millimeters, 26, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And you have to do the same thing on the right side, right? So each numbered spot has on the right, in this case, as the millimeters on the left specified how far they are. And just, just a heads up that the measurement is here, okay, what that dot is. Um, so this is in iLearn, but it is a list. You have to, again, because if you can print, you might as well print and do the other version. But if you can't print, you can look on the screen and draw these up on eight, on nine by 12. Um, once you draw all these little spots all around, including all your verticals spots, then you can connect them. Um, I'm gonna do that now with a piece of trace. Actually, let me take a, a cheaper piece of trace so I don't lose my... And if you did it this way, once you did your drawing, well, actually, if you did it this way, you would draw exactly this, and then you would draw on top of that, right? So I'm not gonna draw on top because I, I might have to reuse it. So I'll just put a trace over it um, and quickly show you how it can be done. Um, So literally now what I'll do is I'll connect same numbers, one, two, three, four, etc., with those numbers on the other side. Okay. I have to move around a little bit, otherwise I can't get under the camera here. So number one to number one over on the right side. Um, once again, the first thing you would do is draw your title, your border, right? Half inch all around your nine by 12. And then here, three extra quarters. And so the frame is your, your working frame um, where you normally put your drawings. Okay, that's where I made those markings. That's where you would have to uh, go to, to put your markings. So, um, So kind of like, again, connecting the dots to see like what might appear. 
So as long as you keep matching one number on the left to the same number on the right, um, it's kind of a Zen exercise, you know, it's sort of, it's sort of you have to believe that <laughs> it will actually appear eventually. Um, so in that sense, I guess it's kind of Zen. Okay, then I did the same thing on the other side and now I'm not gonna do them all, but so on the other side, I have number nine. So I look for number nine, where are you there? Number 10. I mean, since you'd have to do everything from scratch, you know, there's gonna bound, there's gonna bound to be imperfections, but number 11, but all in all, it should be, should be pretty good. Number 12. And number 13 down here. Number 14 is actually down here. And number five was over here. All oh, right, number eight rather. Okay. And then now I do a few of these and see what I get, a few of the verticals. Now the verticals are all verticals. So if you hit one number on one either edge, bottom or left or top, it will it will give you the right one. But um, but if, if you didn't have two triangles, actually let's do that. Let's pretend we don't have two triangles. And in fact, we are connecting the same numbers from the top and the bottom, okay? Or rather, I'm sorry, these are not numbers. These are letters to just distinguish them, okay? So what I'll do now is just like, just do them all. Um, and, and then it's a little bit of reveal the picture kind of thing. Um, uh, there is one, uh, this is actually bigger. I made this four inches. So this is actually enlarged relative to the other system. Um, and once you get this part right here, you can measure four inches. Yeah, from there to there, one, two, three, and four. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll darken that. Um, and from looking at all the other materials in iLearn, you should be able to see my, my spots now are not quite matching, but um, but they're not too bad either. And again, this is a different method, but it can work. I think that's right. Um, and then eventually you kind of see that, you know, it's roughly the shape that you probably want because it would look funny, right? If, if things started to, be a little bit. I'm just going back in now and you know darkening some of these lines. Uh, here's the other cube. Oh, I should say that because I made that mistake of positioning my station point to the right under under this. Um, yeah, under this cube, um, this system is also a little bit skewed to the right and therefore the cube on the left is a little bit too long, basically, okay? So just bear that in mind, it's not a mistake, it's just the way, the way that it works out. Um, Mm 
yeah because you can see it's it's quite long it's sort of this this is this is my cube on the left you can see it's a little bit too stretched out depth, depth wise um and because i did now everything super fast here you can see my lines are not quite matching up properly but um Okay, so roughly there you can see the two cubes. Okay, so again, you could do this as an alternative option B. Um, all right, um, let's take a 10 minute break or yeah, 12 minute break. Let's come back at 3 10. Um, Stop the recording. Okay, everyone. So I'll see you in uh, roughly 10, 12 minutes. Okay. Okay, so we're back. And so again, this was how to do one kind of like drawing by numbers but sort of thing um, to know that it's a little bit bigger for inches tall and um, but just like the other one once you get to this point you can then divide up these verticals into four parts in this case you would divide it up into um, literally four inches and the same is true for all your other verticals they would be divided up into equal amounts so you know if you had millimeters you could try that division so even though you wouldn't have all the points for those smaller divisions on the side here you could um you could find them by for example from here to here if i measure this it happens to be exactly 80 millimeters and that's a stroke of luck because now I can just divide it up into 20 millimeters um, and I would just simply connect those and I would get this very first uh, face um, oops. the way I get the horizontals is simply connecting it like that right um, So now I've got my horizontals on this phrase right here. To get the verticals, I would do the diagonal. Remember that when we had a, a square, sorry, when we had a square with horizontal lines, I could do a diagonal to get my vertical. So if I have a, if I have a square that distorted like that, but I already have my horizontals, a diagonal will also divide it up into proper divisions. So what I could do here is make a diagonal and I would get my little crossings here, which would then give me the line for the uh, verticals. And I would do that and I could do that for all the other sides. Um, now it, it is going to get a little crowded and so tracing paper is going to be a real friend in terms of perhaps isolating some elements but let's just see how this would work here one thing that also helps is um, and you can see my divisions because i did it so fast this division is bigger than that it shouldn't be oh i know why because i made the wrong keep making mistakes see that's my line and I, I took the wrong spot there whoops there's always a reason um, it was actually this spot right here that looks better um, 
what you can do is highlight the crossings with little dots. It does actually amazing things for all of a sudden making this face jump up, right? Because I'm, I'm reading it as a pattern, okay? So these spots, these four divisions, I could just bring them all around and do them on all the other sides simply by, if I wanted to do it here, I would measure this one and it's okay. Now that's a little bit harder. It's 68 divided by four would be 33, 16 and a half. So you can still do it, 16 and a half. 33, pick it up from here, 16 and a half. So there you go, millimeters are just so much easier. Um, and so forth and so on, okay? I will, I will now do it, and you never started this because you were doing the other one, I'll do it here um, and try to get at least a few of the faces uh, finished. Um, to show how the process works then for all the other phases. Um, like I said, there is already a video in YouTube. Um, it, it does show only the steps without actually doing them with the triangles. Uh, it's more like a sketch version. Um, and as soon as I'm done with this, this afternoon, I'll put this up to you. Um, Okay, so the first thing I'll do is transfer these divisions onto the edge here, onto my leading edge. And I can do that without measuring because I can just project, um, project my, um, my divisions here, okay? One, two, and three. Now here, of course, we do have the vanishing points. So the, what we'll do is we'll immediately, we'll immediately go there from these divisions because well, that's the way they operate, right? They, okay, I do the same on the other side. So the process here, it's really, really um, like the tutorial, but in terms of following around, finding that pattern is really like the one point tutorial that we did of the cube as an architectural environment. Okay, um, down to the use of tracing paper, perhaps to um, open it up. Um, and by that, I mean, uh, let's see if we find it. I mean, this process. Well, actually, let me finish the grid first. So now that I've done these horizontals with two diagonals, I can find my verticals. So I do a diagonal here. And I do a diagonal here. And I'm just marking out the spots where I need to do my verticals based on those. Um, Cameras in the way. I have to zoom out. Sorry. What I'll do is I'll finish these two faces, and then I will um, I'll do the rest by hand because uh, otherwise we're going to run out of time. Yeah, those squares look nice. Oh, and I have to do the ones on the right too. Um, again, you have to look for the progression being nice, right? 
from small to larger to larger to larger, small, larger, larger, larger. Um, so I'm going to make these little dots, which will really um, allow me to see it much better. And the same thing here. Here, because they're so close, it's less of an issue. You can kind of see it even without the dots. But um, OK, so now I go back to my design and say, OK, I'm looking. This is my two view number two. So my pattern on the left face is this one. That's my pattern on the right. So I can just really immediately draw it, right? So if I start here from the very edge, um, I can start drawing my pattern. And I just slow it down to make sure I don't make a mistake because now I've got so many lines and it would be a little bit of a, a mess to have to erase. No, of course, I made a mistake right away. <laughs> oh boy, okay. Yeah, it's happening because all my lines are dark, okay? If you keep your lines light, you'll have less of an issue, I think. Because um, you'll be able to separate what's up, the actual design from the construction lines. Okay, now I wrap around here to the side. So right here. And then right there. So once again, this will be your, your cube, right? Your design. Okay. Um, if I wanted to do the other side now, I, it, it could be helpful to have another piece of trace. Um, the other thing is you could use this system. Remember how we did this system where we where we folded um, a piece of paper to be able to go around it. Uh, use this in the in the cube isometric, if you recall. We employed that technique where we made our pattern so that we could see it matching with this pattern, right? And then we folded that almost like it was doors so that we could see it how it would really look through, right? And that can be that can be a technique. Um, and this is what I did here. Oh no, did I cut off an extra piece? What? Oh no, it's correct. Yeah, one. Sorry, that's one. And then that's two. But the other two are underneath. So what I did was I traced them like this. And I traced this one like that. And then I made it all into one thing. So it's, it looks a little messy now because I rushed through it. But that would allow me to see exactly the pattern. I can kind of match my pattern by looking at that, right? Uh, one thing that we need to establish is the center of the cube. So let me just show you real quick. The best way is to just, again, do diagonals. Um, so if this is my cube, it's the best way because it's taking a measurement from opposite far away corners. Okay. That's our cube. So now if I draw two diagonals from opposite corners, uh, let's say those and those perhaps. Uh, let me see if I'm going there straight. Okay. That's my center. 
hopefully I do it right. Um, so here, be saved from this corner from here to here. And maybe from there to there. As long as you pick opposite corners, you'll be good. Um, yeah, somehow I'm not crazy where that set where that center is landing, but I think it has to be right. So um, I was hoping to see a little bit more of um, of this surface right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fudge a little bit and show it. I'm gonna because I believe I, I think I, I wasn't as precise here. Um, so in other words, now I connect all my spots on the sides to the uh, middle. However, before I did that, probably what I would do is I would do everything around draw all the lines and then with tracing paper try to figure it out um, i'm going to try to sketch it now fairly quickly by hand uh, just pretend that i'm using triangles so that it would be you know precise like you would you would want to do it okay um, and in fact maybe what i'll do is i'll use a piece of trace so that um, I don't mess up the drawing, um, but in order to do the process, okay, in order to, what you would do if, okay, so just, just bear with me for a moment, pretend I'm using triangles and I'm going to the, my vanishing points, okay, um, instead I'll just do it by hand, freehand, but it's really, um, and I'll just try to be as much, as precise as I can, uh, doing it freehand. Um, the challenge definitely is isolating each face so you can see your, your design in each face. Um, okay, I'm going to move. Let me see if I can get a better center, maybe. Yeah, well, it is what it is. So it happens to be a little cramped in there, but so that's my center. I'm also going to do the center for this other cube over here. Again, going from opposite um, opposite corners, okay? So those are the centers. And these are my two cubes. Um, Perhaps one way to do it would also be to do the back sides instead first, because those are harder, right? So we could try that. Um, however, we do need the divisions. Now we do know that each vertical is divided exactly in the same amount, right? And we had started out here, right? And we had done our lines the vanishing point. So why don't we, let's just say we have this now here. Um, we would connect this to the vanishing point, right? Now I know they're gonna be dividing this line also equally. So I'm just going to eyeball this line. Again, you wouldn't be eyeballing it, you would be going straight to the edge there, right? But, but because I know they're gonna be the same, and then with the diagonal, I'm going to get my divisions. 
So right away, again, it will, it will get a little crowded, but, but now I have my backside there. By highlighting these spots, I can see it. Now I'm gonna do this one. Um, and I happen to already have them, or you could measure it. So let's see. As usual, I do my diagonal. So pretend I'm doing this all with tools. Right? So that's one. Now I can do, um, actually I messed up here because this should have matched, matched up there. See, I got that double line. Oh, that's not so good. Let me try that again. Yeah, of course, doing it by hand has its drawbacks. Okay, so that's back of the right cube. Um, perhaps now it's time to actually draw the back. So that would be number, if I'm looking here, two, these would be three. And this would be four. So in other words, you have to do this little bottle ship thingy or with the help of the tracing paper, like we talked before, uh, you know, folding it. Now I can see, okay, that's my pattern in the back. So maybe I'll, I'll draw it. Now I'm trying to draw the pattern, right? And on the other side, the same thing, using that technique that we discovered. Um, more simply, I could have gone with the battleship technique, right? So this is face number three, this is face number two. So from the back is number four. And if I start there, I would have said, okay, I go up one and across one, up and across one, and then down two and across one, down two and across one and so forth and so on, right? Until I make my way around. Um, I think before I go to the next one, I'm, I think I wanna finish this one first. Um, And I tell you what, let me just use another piece of trace because really I can I can isolate each layer that way, right? So now I'm going to I know things are gonna get a little bit fuzzy here now, but you could alternate doing this process between tracing paper and and going back to your technical drawing. Um, now I know that's, oops, let me go out here. That's this face. Um, yeah, two and three. So here already had it. Hold on a second here. Let me just. That. And now this one. Okay, so now perhaps on this layer, I'm going to, um, it's a challenging shade because some of the lines almost touch each other. Uh, 
Okay, so now what I did was I did that path around. Now I know the center is right there. Um, and that's a top one, right? Because this very tight area basically represents um, these very large areas, but because they're so angled, they're really narrow, right? Um, still, let's just try to connect them to their respective corners. Um, and some of the th these things, of course, now will instantly become obscured, right? So it's a little bit of trial and error. And it's gotten really tight there. Um, Eventually, though, you should be able to really show just what you need. Yeah. I know it's hard without having the cube, which is really a pity without having the rough cube, but. So here I was double challenged by that, by that detail. So this would be hidden. Okay. I think this one is gonna be a lot easier because it's the view you know, we're looking at it like that. Um, so that's one I'm going to now quickly try to do the other one here so that we can finish it at least for the purposes of the video. Um, and like I said, I would be going to the vanishing point, but in the interest of time, what I'll do now is I'll just simply continue. Like I know this continues, that continues, that continues my diagonal here would go over there. So like that. And again, here, I'll just split it into four. We'll do a diagonal again. I'll do my grid. And maybe I finished that part. So now this is view number one. So it's this view, oops, right here. View number one is this view. So on the left is this design. And might as well just do it. Um, Then it continues on the other side. Now the other side is partially obscured, right? But the other cube. So I will just try to go there. And then it goes, let's see, it was the center right here. Because this was here, I have to, I have to be careful now not to make a, like that. Um, so I'm almost there. Now I have to do the back part and I'm going to use this technique again of, of having yet another layer for the back. Um, split it into four, the vertical. Diagonal. Now lots of overlapping parts, I understand, but 
And now I'm going to wrap around. So that's number, uh, let's see. I'm here, so I gotta continue. So I'm right here and I have to go down one and across two to here. And then to here and to there. Yeah, it's tricky. It's definitely tricky. Um, but we're almost there. It's just, it is a little bit of a work of patience here. So now I'm doing my other grid there. And now, because I know the symmetry of these shapes. Yeah. Because I know that in the front, I definitely am, I'm going to go to the to the middle here because there's nothing in the way here, right? So that's for sure going to be there. Um, on the back, I'll do a trick. I'll put it underneath. Try to match it up. There's no room, hold that a second. Yeah, so now, now you can clearly see what's behind and what's what's in front. So this is this actually does help a lot. And I think the rest I believe is going to be hidden. So this view was a little more forgiving on the left side because we were able to really, really see. Now I'm just gonna do a little trick here. So I can combine two views a little more easily. So, so that's our, now this would help me even if I wasn't quite doing it with the rulers yet, because it allows me to really visualize it, right? Um, so for your final, then you would, you would, uh, you know, put these two in a in one single page um, using a tracing paper. Okay. It's almost 345, so I'm actually going to um, stop the video, but I will stay uh, on. And so if people have questions, but let me stop the video just for the purposes of um, being able to post it without um, extra identifying information, okay? Thank you.